this video, we solve problem 12.1.071 from the Larson and Edwards Calculus Early Transcendental Functions text, 7th edition. We're asked to determine the intervals on which the vector valued function is continuous. And then we're asked to enter our answer using interval notation. So we have r of t equals this function of t times i hat plus this function of t times j hat. Now I actually prefer to write that in component form. So I will write my um, x component right here and my y component right there and I'll have the comma in between them and then these little brackets on either side. Um, I'll prefer to use this um, rather than this. Um, but let's talk about uh, this question. It's asking us to determine where um, the function is continuous. Now it turns out that this function r of t will be continuous on its domain um, and it'll be continuous on its domain uh, because the functions that we have for our x component and y component are rational functions. And when we took uh, calculus one, we discussed the domains of rational functions and we discussed continuity of rational functions. And we said that those were continuous on their domain. Um, since this is continuous on its domain and this is continuous on its domain, um, R of t will be continuous on its domain and its domain will be determined by the domains of x of t and y of t. So even though they're not asking us to find the domain of R of t, in order to find the intervals on which the vector valued function is continuous, what we really have to do is find that domain. Okay, so in general, if you're trying to find the domain of R of t, and R of t is in the plane with components x of t and y of t, all you have to do is find the domain of x of t and find the domain of y of t, and the domain of R of t is the intersection of those two intervals. Remember, that's just where the intervals overlap. Um, so that's the plan. First, we're going to find the domain of x of t. Now, when you are finding a domain of a function of a single real variable, um, we do that in the following way. Basically, we, we look for t values that won't work, and then we say that everything else will. So we'll say the domain will consist of all real numbers t, except for those that cause the following problems. So we're going to excuse, or excuse me, exclude t values that cause division by zero, even roots of negative numbers, and logarithms, or, or logarithms, of negative numbers or zero. If we have a t value that causes one of these problems, it can't be in the domain. The domain of x of t will be any t values, um, and any of the rest of the real numbers, any, any t values that don't cause these problems. Um, so, that's what we'll do. First, we'll find the domain of x of t. And in this case, our x of t is this function right here, 1 over 6t plus 1. This is going to be a set of real numbers t. And we can't divide by 0. We can't take even roots of negative numbers. And we can't take logs of negative numbers or 0. But notice there are no logarithms here, so that's not an issue. There are no square roots, fourth roots, sixth roots, and so on. We don't have to worry about number two. The only thing that we could might have a problem with is dividing by zero because there is a t value that would cause this denominator to be zero. So um, any real number t will work except for the t values that cause six t plus one to be zero. So we're gonna say um, the domain is a set of all t in the real numbers such that six t plus one is not equal to zero. We don't want that to be zero. And then you can solve that inequality for t by subtracting one from both sides and then dividing by um, six. And we'll have t is not equal to negative one six. Okay, so that's our x of t. And then we also need to find the domain of y of t. And y of t is just this function, y equals 1 over t. And this is very similar. Any real number will work 
except for the real numbers that cause division by zero, even roots of negative numbers or logs of negative numbers are zero. We don't have to worry about the even roots or the logs in this particular problem. Um, here we've got a one over t. We'll have a problem if t happens to be zero. So we'll say all real numbers t except for t equal to zero. All real numbers t such that t is not equal to zero um, is the domain of this function. Okay, so the domain of x of t looks like this. We go from negative infinity to negative one sixth and from negative one sixth to infinity. And then the domain of y of t looks like this. We have a problem that x equals, or sorry, t equals zero, but any other t value would work. The domain of R of T is the intersection of those two intervals. So that's where those two intervals overlap. All T values that belong to this set um, and this set. So we see we're going to have to skip over negative one sixth because negative one sixth is not in the domain of x of t. We're also going to have to skip over zero because our t equals zero is not in the domain of y of t. So it looks like they overlap here from negative infinity to negative one sixth, and then negative one sixth to zero, and then zero to infinity. And in interval notation, if I put a negative infinity over there and an infinity over there, we can just read this from left to right. The domain of R of t is this first interval, the interval from negative infinity to negative one sixth. And we want the union of that interval with this interval, um, the interval from negative one sixth to zero. And then the final, finally, we want that um, interval from zero to infinity. And that's the domain. The next logical step is to say, okay, they're asking us not for the domain, but the intervals on which the vector valued function is continuous. Um, so we'll say R of T is continuous on its domain. I'll just say because X of T and Y of T are rational functions. All of the functions that we studied in pre-calculus are continuous on their domains. Polynomials, exponentials, logarithms, rational functions, root functions, um, all of your trig functions, your inverse trig functions, all of them are continuous on their domains. So as long as these are those familiar functions, as long as we don't have any, any like step functions or anything you know, sort of um, different, uh, those, those basic functions that you studied in your pre-calculus class are all continuous on their domain. So when they ask about continuity, they're really asking about domain. And uh, this is how you find the domain of a function of one variable and to find the domain of, not a function of one variable. Um, this is how you find the domain of a function of one variable. Um, but in order to find the domain of a vector valued function, you need to find the domain of each of the components separately and then find out where they intersect or overlap. Um, another way you can look at this, this last piece is to just to do this. All of these t values belong to both sets, but then we have to skip that one. So I put an open circle here Then all of these t values belong to both sets. Then I have to skip that one. And then all of these t values belong to both sets. Again, I'm thinking to myself, I want all of the t values that are in both of these domains. Both of these, um, let's, I was going to say intervals, but it's actually a union of a number of intervals. So we'll say domains. Hope that helps. Um,
that's our answer. Please let me know if you have any questions.